My enemies are many. My equals are none. Welcome back to part 33 of my France Let's Play for Napoleon Total War with Darth Maud. We continue where we left things off last time, where we had just shattered the Austrians one last time, taking their final settlement of Limburg. They have now been annihilated from the campaign. No more Austrians. Now we face the Great Bear, Russia, to the east. Although we won't be advancing um, east just yet. One, because it's winter, and we all know how well that goes. But also because, as we said over the past couple of episodes, you guys would really like to see me kind of end this campaign fielding our best possible troops uh, and having our best possible armies configured and built uh, to use in battle. So we need to do some more research. We are just waiting for our military academy in Paris to be built, which will unlock the next round of technology. Um, so we've got three turns left on that. We're also doing one in England. We're just getting them everywhere. Uh, that will also let me get more generals as well because that will increase my general app. I can get so it'll be nice to have some generals in some armies as well obviously we don't need generals in armies because this uh total war in my opinion does it right in terms of not needing generals commanding armies i miss that i want that back uh, along with like the hero of the hour events and things like that and captains making a name for themselves but yeah once we've three more turns got the military academy then we can start researching through all this which is why we're not getting rid of our unused uh universities and colleges right now that aren't researching anything because very soon they will have stuff to research um but rather than just blast through a load of turns, what we're going to do is secure our eastern front against the Russians. We are going to go to war with the Ottomans in the next few turns, and probably like next five to ten turns, because we'll need to get some armies down here ready to smash through. The Ottomans are actually at war with Russia, and they're starting to take ground against them. So we want to see. I kind of want to see what's going to go on in um, Moldova between the. Uh, between the Russians and the Ottomans. But then, yeah, we're going to swoop one in. We're going to take all this territory. We are also at war with the Kingdom of Sicily and Naples. And quite a few of you pointed out saying, Lionheart, you should probably deal with those Italian states. Uh, so we'll try and do that. And then Spain. Spain might be something we do as like a bonus objective once we have hit our victory of conquering Moscow, which we have until late December 1812 to do. Plenty of time. I imagine this campaign will probably be done by like 1810 at the latest if not before. Just kind of depends on the number of turns we need to spend sorting out research and recruiting our best troops and what have you. Um, uh, one of you are saying, like, don't you need to, like, does it not matter the victory um, kind of end date in this? Because surely you'll get an option to continue your campaign anyway. I believe that is the case that you will get the option to continue. But I, I have a feeling that if you don't complete the objectives by late December 1812, you won't be able to kind of get, like, check mission complete as such. Um, and seeing as we are doing these from like the narrative campaigns of Napoleon, we want to try and hit that. And I, I honestly can't think of a scenario where we will not be able to complete this by 1812. Um, but as I said, I reckon we'll do it a couple of years before then comfortably. But yeah, once we hit that, we may well then just kick the declare war on Spain, kick the Spanish fleet out of here and defeat this fleet. Because I'm pretty sure in there, hidden in there, is their best ship that they have, unless it's over here, the Santissima Trinidad, which in Napoleon Total War is the ship with the highest firepower in the game. It's got 140 guns, I want to say. Uh, it's absolutely massive, uh, as was the real Santissima Trinidad. It, I don't think it actually was the biggest warship of its age, though, because I think there were there were one or two others that eclipsed it, um, or, or soon after, or what have you. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of the the largest ships ships of the line that ever was, um, which is still really impressive, and I want to see that in battle, um, either capture it or sink it. So we might do that. But yeah, for now the plans are shore up our line against the Russians, go um, south and to the east to deal with the Ottomans, and then have some other armies probably deal with uh, Naples. We'll probably build some fresh forces actually, maybe with some of the new troops we can get, kind of blood them early against the uh, the Italians and then sail on up through the Black Sea and strike um, Russia. Uh, we may start advancing before our final armies are ready just to secure some lines. But for now, we're going to hold along here. We can see the Russians are marshalling some forces around. So let's end the turn and see where they all go. Because I think some of them are hiding. Okay, actually, I'll leave this on slow just so I can see their armies or keep shifting they're moving an army up towards Courland. Uh, ah that's that army that had escaped through we will need to give chase to that 
I mean, we can probably deal with it with the Fusiliers that we've got behind. But that will draw them out of a nice defensive position. So we'll see where they're going. They're going to pull back to Lithuania. Just regroup their forces. What I, what I honestly truly hope is that Russia gives us a damn hard fight now. I'd like a, a brutal fight um, on the Eastern Front. Said no one ever. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like it to be tough. I'd like it to be a bit of a challenge if possible, please. And I want to see what the Ottomans and the Russians are doing. In fact, we'll probably put my spy into Moldova, so then I'll be able to get vision around that whole that whole area. After four turns, it will set up a spy network. Because I doubt we'll be in a position to attack the Ottomans within four turns, because we need to bring some other forces. Napoleon's in the area, but we'll need more forces than just his. Oh, there are naturally occurring resources in this region. Some gold. My spy. Oh, yeah, over in Madrid. You'd think that I'd have vision across everything. I'd also be able to see what ships they've got, you know? Ba, 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 ba. Right, so that's that Russian army that's escaped through. We can try and give chase with Napoleon. But he's going to be delayed. Or we can pull back Messena. In fact, in fact, I probably need to pull back Messena because he's able to deal with it. We've got forces around, but I need to leave them kind of defending and in place. Um, definitely want to invest in our roads. Seeing as these might be our front lines for a while, I think we'll build star forts along them as well. Normally don't do it because I norm I don't typically like how they uh, affect your the AI trying to defend. Right, yes, yeah, so we found that army. I think yeah, we'll pull Masena back because that army's gone this way. I'm gonna pop you in here to infiltrate. The mission successful in four turns. If we leave him in there, we'll be able to see the whole region. Um, we've got other spies. We've got you going to Minsk. Infiltrate and set up a spy network there. That way we'll be able to see any Russian armies coming towards the front quite comfortably. And you're going to go into Riga for exactly the same reasons. We'll be able to see clearly what's coming in over here. So give them four turns. We'll be able to have a full clear line of sight across all territories, which would be nice. I really want to upgrade that, but we need the standardized artillery. Uh, we were looking for anywhere where we could continue to upgrade stuff on the front line. Um, yeah, a bit of staff fort at um, Klausenberg in Transylvania, actually. I'll say, yeah, infrastructure over building that, but we'll do that for now. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We've got to fight them. Before we do though, I think we've got a naval battle ready to go and we're going to see what's going on in Moscow as well. I'm going to infiltrate over here. Ah ha ha, we can see this army. Ah, oh, we can't get round. Uh, what we'll do is hope that he moves off next turn then I can go around into Moscow. Otherwise we've got to march all the way back around that way. Uh, so over here, we are going to kick the Russian Navy Russian fleet out of their ports. They are much weaker than ours, but I haven't had a naval battle for a little while. And I'm unlikely to get probably another one after this. Aha, you're going to flee. So let's go. Let's go blast them. Right out the guns. It's time to blast some Russians. Can bears swim? Today, we find out. Uh, would I consider one day redoing the USA campaign? Maybe. Maybe with like, I was planning on actually going back to Empire to check out the Empire 2 mod and the, um, um, the, uh, Pirates Uber Allies mod. Because apparently both of them are meant to be really good. What is this starting deployment? Like, I'm very, we've got. Damn this weather, confused. Sir. Wet powder makes me so obviously the, the AI's over there, we can't see them. They'll like, be here. But we don't have the wind. Okay, fine. 
So, I mean, I'm going to... But then where's the, where's the limit of my deployment? Oh, all the way up to here. Where where the heck are they going to be? Oh, we want to deploy... Four. Why were we right at the back? So I'm, I'm a little bit worried that... I can't get my bearings on this. I don't know where the AI is going to form up. But I guess we'll go here because if they, if they are suddenly up ahead of us, we'll have the wind to go to them. And if they're in front of us, which I think they must surely be, unless they're going to be like up over here somewhere, then... Um, We'll just wait for them to come to us, I guess. Lots of small little groups. Just to give us a little bit more maneuverability if we need it. Oh, they are there. Cool. All right, fast forward because they should just sail straight at us. Or they'll sail along this way. And if they do that, then we just tell our ships to go forward because we'll have a bit of the wind behind us anyway. It looks like they're going to try and swing round here, which is A-OK -okay with me. Get everybody moving. Ah, oh, no, they're turning back on themselves. Thought that might happen. You're making a right mess of it is what you're doing. You're trying to kind of tack and jive your way up through the wind. I don't want to go too far off to the left and then have them flank us from behind. So we'll just fast forward it a little bit more. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's it. You're in range. Unleash the cannon! We're just going to blast them. There's no need to try and catch them or anything like that. You guys over here are probably not going to have a good time of it. Because if I turn you around, you'll be sailing into the wind. The only thing I can probably do is send you across that way. So I might try and do that a little bit. Just catch them on the other end, if that's what they want to do. These guys here should all be able to fire, though. And in fact, I, I imagine they're going to... They're surely going to turn around... Either come round us this side. Or they're going to loop round again and come along... In close quarter. So I am just going to... Let our ships do their thing. I'm going to switch between fast forward and normal play. For a little bit. Just waiting to see. Are they going to come up and round? Or are they going to cut shorter because they're starting to turn now. If they get up around our, the other side of us, that's fine. My ships will be ready for that as well. Most of them are getting bogged down in the center though, which is just happy days. That one's lost its its um, masts. Good, good, good. Yeah, okay, they're, they're actually able to get up and around us because they've now caught the wind, so they'll have some speed. That is fine, because what my ships can do now is just do a little turn to create a wall of cannon. Which they're pretty much already doing here, but these guys can turn up with the wind. Yeah, as we already got these guys turning around, so that's worked out nicely. Kind of a little bit of early prep for that. Happy days. And it's going to be very easy just to maneuver the rest of the other ships around. As and when we need to. The rest of them already got them. Perfect. There we go. Catch them as they turn. Boom, 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 boom. 
when that one's done, you can turn as well. You've still got a few more to get. Lovely. Here they come. Got the wind if we need to. We can sail around. Maximum firepower. They've got a few more coming around now, but these, these guys have got no hope of making it through that gauntlet of ships. No way. There we go. Get these ships around. You're, yeah, you're trying to sail across there. That's fine. Go up this way, and yeah, you're turning around that way as well. You're all happy there. You guys are trying to come around too. Full sail, please. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Noise. Keep blasting them. You got them. And when you don't, start sailing up that way. Give them a rippling broadside. Just got blasted real hard. I mean, they are only teeny tiny frigates. I'm essentially the big, big bad French bully at the park right now. But the Russians had it coming. Oh, turning into the bombardment as well. I love it. But yeah, you turn around here now and shatter these guys. Ooh, you're taking you're taking a little bit of damage. Oh, that's because you've got oh, I was like, you got one big ship. That's a merchantman though. Two merchantmen. I think it's because this one's just been soaking up all that damage. Off we go. That one's going to take like one or two more hits and then it's gone. Wait for this one. Here we go. By the broadside, Sybil. They're still reloading, that's why. Yeah, it's turn with it then. That one's gone. Rippling broadsides. The Admiral has fallen, sir. Now we will see their true Music colors. to my ears. Screen that one in place nicely. Yeah, they've all gone. Happy days. Lovely stuff. Yeah, you've gone. Um, that one's left. That's the last one, right? Turn, 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 turn. There we go. And gone. That's a victory for us. Comfortably. Boom. Yeah, we, we, we didn't need to fight that, but that gives me a huge... Satisfaction buzz. <laughs> as much as I love Fall of the Samurai's naval battles, and in some regards they are better just because they've got like newer tech and stuff, because that's set in what 18 the 1860s, 1870s. Um This I feel is the best age of sail and just kind of the best use of the kind of naval combat system in any total war game overall. It just it feels the best. Um Maybe, maybe, um, Fall of Samurai is like the most satisfying, 
to play because of the units that you've got access to. But this one feels really good. We're leaving a space for the general to go into. And yeah, we're drawing this army down here because we're going to march these three armies. Um, Jura and Napoleon against the Ottomans. So we'll need some more forces from Poland. Aha, uh, we've got... Um, yeah. And Brun. And on over. We'll march you there. I'm going to see where you guys go before I react and respond to you. Uh, where do we send but Bernadotte's up here, right? Davo and Bernadotte. Yeah, that's fine. You can watch this guy. I mean, Bernadotte could come and attack these guys, to be fair. I mean, they're going to run, right? Go on, though. See him off, Bernadotte. Oh, no, you're going to stand a fight. I'll take the order of solving. That's going to kill. How did they kill a thousand of my men? That's ridiculous. Yeah, all the resolve be drunk in this. There's no way. Right, Masena. All the other moves are done. Uh, although, actually, I mean, I guess we could move... We could move Napoleon here, couldn't we? But I think we'll leave Napoleon there for the moment until we can reinforce with force from Warsaw. We will probably still pull Mira down here. Yeah, get that cavalry back to his force. And send the spy through here, because I'll send you probably to be a spy at Kiev. Although maybe, maybe at um, um, Dolia. Right, Masena, if they run, we won't be able to chase them. But I imagine they'll stay put. In fact, we may not be able to reach them. We might just have to hit them with some cavalry. Which would be annoying because actually then I won't be able to deploy with all my forces. Uh, you can still run from here, can't you? Can I? Is it everything apart from my artillery? No, it's just the cavalry. I don't really... Have they got cannon? They do. I am going to risk it then. I'm going to see where they go during this end turn phase. Okay, we can see that army moving over there. That's good. And moving some more forces down by Lithuania. Just kind of reinforcing. Forces marching out from Moscow. Right, you are going to go. You're going to go hit Budapest? No, you've gone along the river. That's fine. That's fine. I want to trap you or I can set up with my cannons properly. Yeah, I thought you guys would send some troops in. We'll disband that militia. They don't need to be stuck behind enemy lines like that. Swedish, please attack Sweden. I will take out Sweden, actually. The, I mean, Denmark's already knocked you out of Stockholm. You've only got Finland under your control right now. So I'll be going over there and claiming that as a northern base of operations. occurring resources in this region that are not currently being exploited. Development in these areas now will increase your nation's trade income later. Got another spy at Brandenburg. Works on strike at Brandenburg. And more industrial mining complexes. You right, guys are unhappy again. Oh, seriously. I can't. I can't. You've already got a full army there, which I'd like to move on. Is we've got the Grand Opera House coming in. We've got another spy to send. I guess send, send every spy we possibly can to the east. Yeah, I mean, all that should be keeping them happy for now, but... 
Okay, yeah, get that in there. Uh, this one's come to the front line again. Just to check that we've got everything in here that we can be upgrading. Yep. And the infrastructure. Yep. Uh, Starfall up Poland. No, we won't do that just yet. We'll leave it up here, though. Now, I've got my Italian troops from here. We can still get a few more, can't we? Yeah, another one there. And two more of these guys. Let's queue them all up. And we can have an army of Italy knock out Naples and Sicily eventually. Ah, good. Yes, we got the new troops ready. The experimental howitzers and the artillery a pied. Beautiful. There's another experimental howitzer on the list. Uh, we'll be able to get more infantry in one more turn. Wonderful, along with new technologies. Good, 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 good. Um, we'll wait to get more cavalry and everything else shortly, because these are going to be our new elite armies that we send on in. Just trying to work out what's upset them here. Religious unrest. Right. Uh, Clamour for reform. It's just industrialization, right? And resistance to foreign occupation still. The thing is, we can't. We've, we've got a full stack in here. We can't repress. We can't repress them anymore. I guess the only way would be a. Because we're. They're not exempt, are they? Would be to lower the lower class taxes a teeny tiny smidge. Doesn't actually make too much of a difference. If we do that a little bit, it actually stimulates some growth in the region as well. Funny that, lowering tax levels stimulates growth. Yeah, just keep the middle classes taxed at normal. Just lower the lower classes just until we get like an like a few more turns for Berlin to chill. Just I don't want, I don't think it would have spawned a rebellion straight away, but I don't want a rebellion behind my lines when all my armies are advancing. Then suddenly have to turn around and be like, oh no, how did that happen? Whoops. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can build till next turn there. So yeah, just save, probably save the money or just keep finding ways to invest it. Ah, oh, more roads there. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, upgrade that because we want to try and send more troops out from Marseille if we can. Okay, can Masena catch them now? Yes. You shouldn't be able to run now. Good, good. Mira, yeah, you will go down here instead. We are sending this spy over here to infiltrate. Okay, we can see they've got some forces ready to go. Okay, it's now early March, so we won't have to any more attrition for a little while, so we can actually move our armies out just a smidge if we really wanted to. Davo. Can we try and catch the enemy in the forest here? Yes, let's see if that'll work. Militia, you can go. Because yeah, I might actually pull Bernadotte back. I suppose we don't have a port here. We do. There's up over there. But I might pull them back actually to go to this navy. And then we'll take out Finland. Although if I'm not mistaken, they've got quite a, a good number of armies there. But maybe that's what Bernadotte can do. Yeah. Not like Bernadotte becoming king of Sweden uh, is fitting at all. But yeah, let's do it. I'm purposely leaving Konigsberg as a tasty looking target because I'm hoping they'll that'll trigger Davo's attack there, or his ambush there, rather. Right. Uh, so is that logging camp I can upgrade? Yes, it is. Okay, note to self when we've got more money. Masena, though. Break the bear that has wandered into our territory. That, actually, I would say that balance power is in their favor. Two six-pounders, plenty of cavalry, plenty of musketeers. They're strong, but are they tough enough to beat Masena? Let's find out. In we go. Uh, 
Oh, what a terrible starty deployment. With the hills. We want to draw them into a place of our choosing. Someone put a cannon up in the balloon and fire. Let's make a, uh, a dwarven thunder barge. Um, yeah, okay, we're going to deploy back a little bit in the flat. Damn this weather, sir. Damn this West weather. Weather inspires a certainty. Should have another group the other side of the trees. Quite wide. I'm not sure if I want that over there, that far, far folks, but the rest of it is just forest. And we've got no good deployment here. I think we we'll have to do a single unit between each one. But yeah, looking at it, we're still gonna have to put one over here. You guys over to the left. Right. There we go. Enough of you to get over to that cannon. And then one last one, I think. We will have you here and then pop the light troops in front to screen or even actually further over on the right and then we've got a unit capable of forming square to support them if need be cavalry into groups left and right Go, go, go. Okay. A glorious victory, sir. Give him a damn yours. good barrage. Now, have they popped their artillery on the high ground? I mean, yes, but not in an ideal position, so they are going to have to probably shuffle. Got to draw them to us. Are we able to strike their artillery as well? A little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to have to send my cavalry in. Got both of them there, haven't they? line it works we can secure this flank on the right we'll be able to swing all the way up and around possibly sweep away their artillery if they keep it up on that hill Let's see what happens we got cavalry charging towards us over here. Then my cavalry to respond. Change the artillery to canister very quickly. Set you guys to square because they're definitely going to hit that. It's fine. We will not need to move the cannon. So pull the unit back. Broken the cavalry. Out of square. You guys back on. Happy days. I think it's done enough to draw the enemy forces towards us. Yep. And they're huge regiments of infantry. 400 men apiece marching towards us. Put you guys 
back. Here come the Lancers. Hopefully you guys reload to give them a volley. Because this close, it will be very deadly. Charge the musketeers. Have you guys flank? Tried getting a volley off. Form up behind. And hit him from behind. And then pull back. I'm just going to wait for them to connect. Russian troops typically have a very low or much lower morale stat than other nations in the game. We do do a fair amount of damage to these guys in the end, though. Leave them engaged fighting. Everyone on canister now. That's what we want. They're holding pretty well. Pull them back. Light troops should hold on the left. The infantry swarming on in. Uh, let's send this cavalry then to go take out their artillery. Asking for it. Yeah, center of the field breaking. Oh, please fire straight through these guys. That would be incredible. Ah, damn, they got cavalry into the cannon. Move the cannon crew into the center of the square. Try and save them. Oh, and you guys got charged on the other side. Russians and their infantry charges. Name a more dynamic duo. Our men are running, sir. Yeah, they've cleared that cannon away. Oh, no. They've reformed, but pull them back. Cannon crew is inside the square. Holding. Get them, lads. Flank. Here we go, Cav. You guys secure over here. This is fine. Back into line. Pop you guys back on your cannons to blast them with canister. Brutal fight over the previous cannon position, but you guys can now charge on in and hit them from behind. Light troops keep them busy. We've shattered the infantry over here. Pull the cavalry back and have them firing into the flanks of the enemy. Still a good chunk of them holding here, actually. 
Yeah, credit to the Russians. They were giving us a tougher fight than expected. So that unit wouldn't need to move, but actually it could do with moving to flank them now. But no luck. We'll pull the cavalry in behind them. Just try and envelop the forces now. Charge across. I do remember the Russian infantry does have very high melee stats. They are they are great for getting stuck in in melee fights. In charge. I think they have a charge bonus for their infantry as well. Oh, you guys have already engaged. Troops advance. Go to the flanks. Turn to face. Charge of our own. See how you guys like this. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Yeah, that's the break. You guys have used up all your ammo. Wow. Enemy generals down. Full nev. cookie crumbles 1172 lost yeah they gave us a good run for our money there he did some damage we have 410 remaining which can be swatted away by these guys and they lost four no they're still going there but by now there we go right you guys pull back and yeah, you can you can march actually ready for our strike on Belgrade, which should be done from yeah here. Take Belgrade, and then we want to dive straight to Athens or have a naval landing there. Will be a strike on both Bucharest and Moldovia at the same time, but we need to keep Lemberg secure, so we'll need this other army to march in the uh, Polish army. We've been building up at Warsaw to move in and hold Lemberg. So then Napoleon can march on Moldova. Mira goes for Bucharest. And then Napoleon or Mira onto Istanbul. The other one holds. Um, so yeah, Messena. So yeah, I think we've got, we've got our armies down there that we need. That is good. The force is moving on back. I think that's all we can do right now. I just want to get through one more in turn so we can see what new units we can recruit. From Paris. So one last in turn for today's episode. Keep a little eye on the Russians, where they're going. And I think we need now another two more turns for our spies that we've popped into various settlements to establish spy networks. So we should get a lot more vision in about two more turns. So definitely next episode.
there are naturally occurring resources in this region that are not currently being exploited. Thanks, Leia. Development in these areas now. Nice. Right. Yeah, so we need to get that upgrade to Staff College, but that means we need to do a load of tech. So we will do that at the start of the next episode, sorting out our tech. But also, let's have a quick little look. Oh, my days. Yeah, the UI is going to get messy. We can get the French Old Guard Grenadiers à cheval. Uh, we can get Carassiers. We can get Guards of Honor. Oh, my. We can get the Lancer Cavalry, Hussars. I don't think there's no more artillery with that. It'll be infantry now. We can get the Dutch Grenadiers. French Middle Guard. We are capped on the number we can get of these guys. Um, Velite Grenadiers, Elite Infantry. Young Guard, wonderful. What's that unit there? Oh, the, the Braves. Yeah, we definitely want to get them. I think that's all of it. Yeah, the EUI is going to get very crowded, but that is nothing we can do about that. That's Darth Maul. Right, well, we will pick things up next time with our France campaign. Recruiting some new new shiny units of Paris for one of our many new armies. And then also sorting out our technology. Um, I'll switch some of the agricultural research. I'll probably take these sevens and eights away. We'll leave that four on there because that's getting the last one, the steam powered factory. And we'll move the others onto military tech. The most important is that we get our best college possible onto general staff because that unlocks the staff college for our, our, our absolute best troops, including the old guard. And we, of course, want more of them in action, certainly in Napoleon's army. So until the next one, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and all that goodness. Until the next one, take care and ciao for now.